In September of 1941, the United States Navy established a Navy ROTC Reserve Officer Training Corps at Notre Dame. The ROTC students were enrolled as regular four-year students, but their course of study emphasized subjects required by the Department of Naval Science and Tactics. These ROTC students represented less than one-tenth of the student body. Then, three months later, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. The United States was at war. War was not unfamiliar to the Notre Dame campus. As far back as 1859, when President Father Soren appointed William Lynch to organize a cadet corps, Notre Dame President Father Corby blessed the Irish Brigade at the Battle Cemetery Ridge in Gettysburg. Military training became part of the curriculum at Notre Dame shortly after the Civil War and lasted until shortly before World War I. During World War I, Notre Dame again contributed students and faculty to the war. The War Memorial Door of Sacred Heart Church in the center of Notre Dame's campus still bears the name of 46 Notre Dame men who died during the war. On December 7, 1941, Notre Dame campus faced educated students during another war. Students immediately began leaving school to enlist. Faculty were called for service and priests were volunteering as chaplains. Father O'Donnell, the president of Notre Dame, recognized that Notre Dame was facing a crisis. He contacted the Navy to offer Notre Dame's campus for training programs. On February 10, 1942, Father O'Donnell announced that the B-7 program would start on Notre Dame's campus on April 15, 1942. Notre Dame was one of the first of three universities designated for the B-7 program. This move ensured Notre Dame's survival and began a long-standing tradition of support between the Notre Dame and the U.S. Navy and identified the university as a patriotic supporter of the war. The changes to Notre Dame came quickly. On April 15, 1942, the first group of 900 V-7 men arrived on campus. Unlike the ROTC students, the Navy's initially V-7 trainees were not full-time college students. Instead, they were college graduates who were sent to Notre Dame for a four-week indoctrination course in deck officer training or special assignments. Classrooms were filled with the midshipmen, with each additional class composed of 1,200 students. The sound of marching could be heard everywhere, but the changes on campus were not limited to the Naval students. Notre Dame, consistent with the government's request, revised its academic program to accelerate the education of all students. Each class of trainees had 30 days of indoctrination, then went to, on to receive commissions, and were reassigned to various places around the country to receive further training. One trainee, Ralph Kent, wrote the Navy official song that is still used today and is played by the Navy band at the end of each football game that Navy plays at Notre Dame. By the spring of 1943, about one half of the Notre Dame's facilities were being used by the Notre Dame Navy. Notre Dame was one of the few colleges who accepted black trainees, which also boosted their enrollment. The trainees were as young as 17 and attended regular university classes and were taught by Notre Dame professors as opposed to the midshipmen who were taught by the naval officers. During World War II, it was difficult for most universities to find enough male students to keep an active college sports schedule. Notre Dame's Navy trainees participated in many sports and used the national championships in 1943 and 44 in football, tennis, and golf. The 1943 football season was the first season that Navy students at Notre Dame actually played against other Navy students for the Naval Academy. The 1943 National Champions football team was formed from all the elements of Notre Dame at the time. B-12 Navy and Marine trainees, ROTC students, Navy Air Corps recruits, and civilian students. The team was led by Coach Leahy, who entered the Navy himself in 1944. Other than sports programs and campus clubs, there appeared to be little interaction between the small groups of civilian students and the Navy trainees. They were taught in separate classrooms, lived in separate dorms, and socialized in separate areas. Civilian student Bill Schmidt and Navy trainee Dr. McKenna both said there was little interaction between Navy trainees and the civilian students. Well, of course, the student body in those days was pretty small, and uh, the B-12 had taken over the, the campus pretty much, so my life on campus was much different than it is today. Well, obviously, the government ran a program for their B-12 students, military stuff. I had nothing to do with that. I was strictly civilian. I'm going to school. When I was 17 years old, I enlisted in the Navy. The war was at its worst at that time. It was terrible. 
and I wanted at least, if I was going to die, I wanted at least to choose my own service. So I chose the Navy, and I thought they would immediately send me to sea. They sent me to college instead. I never applied to Notre Dame. I never paid any tuition to Notre Dame. In fact, I was paid to go to Notre Dame, and I did indeed get a degree from Notre Dame. Isn't that amazing? It was very exciting to be there. So I remember the excitement of being there. It was, it was and is a beautiful campus. Uh, and of course, all there were were really, now there were some civilians, but there is a tremendous quadrangle that goes from uh, Newt Rockney Memorial hoop de doo which is where there's a swimming pool and physical education, all the way down to the other end of the campus, and we fill that up every single morning with Navy, Marine Corps, and various other people in, in uh, oh, midshipmen. There was a midshipmen school there. So it was filled with military people, and we marched to class, and we marched to breakfast, we marched to lunch, and we marched to supper, and we marched to physical education, and all those things. And I remember all of that, and all of that was exciting. Notre Dame has a long tradition of deep-rooted respect for Navy. The connection between Notre Dame and Navy fits well with each school's own tradition. The Naval Academy refers to its motto as duty, honor, country. Notre Dame's motto is God Country, Notre Dame. The two schools' football teams still play a football game each year. To this day, and this past year, Navy won for the first time in 43 years. Ryan Harris, a Notre Dame football player from 2003 to 2006, spoke about the tremendous respect the Notre Dame students have for the midshipmen. Every year you want to beat them more than any other game, but at the same time you recognize uh, that you know these guys are going to go and, and they're serving the country. and. They've made a commitment far deeper than, than we have in, in terms of, you know, putting our lives in jeopardy. So you really, it's really the utmost respect, but also the utmost competition because uh, you don't want to be the first team, Notre Dame team, that loses to them. But at the same time, you know, you respect them for their effort and their dedication and, uh, and what they're giving up to, uh, to, to be on that field and also to be a part of the Naval Academy. Well, 2005 was the first time we, uh, we went behind the Navy players and sang with them their uh, alma mater. And uh, Coach Weiss came to us you know, kind of earlier that week and, and he had seen them sing their alma mater e even when they win or lose. And, uh, and you know, one thing with the Navy game, you always want to honor, you know, uh, the guys who play because, you know, those seniors are going, you know, straight to the front lines or they're going to serve our country. So in a, in a way of gratitude and recognition, uh, Coach Weiss had us sing, sing behind them and with them uh, their alma mater. The Midshipman School held its fourth, fifth, and sixth graduations in 1944. Finally, at the end of 1944, the Navy's presence at Notre Dame started to drop. At the end of that year, the Navy announced that there would be no more B-12 trainees assigned to any college. The Marines were the first B-12 group to leave campus, and they took their all-star future Heisman Trophy winner with them. It is widely recognized that the Navy training programs saved Notre Dame from the dangerously low enrollments during the war. The Navy paid the university for room and board of the trainees and also the upkeep and repair on all campus facilities that the program used. But the benefits were not just one-sided. It is estimated that Navy saved $81 million over the two years by contracting with colleges for their facilities, faculty, and administrative support. Thus, what could have been a conflict became a historical compromise that helped to save the University of Notre Dame and helped to save our country.